today? All right, so I'm Henry, and this is Jason, and we're here today, and I just want to say that right now we are not being paid to be here. In fact, we are taking our times off work to be here, and right after we're done, we actually have to put our boots on and go back to work. But we have a burning passion for getting the truth out there, and we really wish that when we were in, in high school that people came and told us the information that we are here today. So yeah, so that's why we're here today. We're coming here to teach ourselves, you know, back in high school, exactly what, what a vegan is and a vegan lifestyle can do for you. So, I just want to say that we're not doctors, we're not health and nutrition specialists, we don't have all these certificates, but what we do have is the living proof. I believe that words are words. I come in. Come on in. Come on. You guys ready to come in and learn today? Come on, more than merrier. Let's do this. No, yeah, no, I think it's good. We're just all sure. Today. I think that should be it. I think we got it on the head. I need some over. Especially like a suit thing. Feeling well dressed. I know. I forgot. So. All right. Um. So yeah, we don't have all our health certificates. We're not doctors, but we do have the proof. I mean, we believe that words are words. I mean, I almost heard there is a study against eating almost every single food that we eat, and uh, so we have our proof that we. So I've heard a lot of nutritional special, a lot of doctors will give health advice, but they'll be overweight themselves. I mean, I mean, who do you want to listen to about advice? Someone who's in great shape or someone who is overweight? I mean, you just have to look at the facts here. So the fact is that we did transform our lives. At one point we were overweight, and then we lost all the weight and gained it all back in vegan muscle, and that is the proof that we have today for ourselves. But, you know, don't believe us. We might be crazy, you know what I mean? So, so but, but, but there are many other... People and celebrities like Russell Brand, Natalie Portman, Ellen's vegan, there's Mike Tyson's vegan. I mean, there's so many other people that are waking up to, to the fact that vegan is a healthy way of living. And these people can obviously afford to eat whatever they want, but what do they choose to eat? Vegan. But it's not about being a celebrity either. We're talking about health and being um, an athlete in performance. Is there, is a, is a, I, I just want to bring it back for one second and pull up and talk, and talk about a vegan for a second here. So what is a vegan actually? A vegan right here, a person that does not eat or use animal products. Yeah, and not only that, it's a more of a compassionate way of living. I mean, by not uh, eating, eat, eating the animals, it's actually more healthy for the environment, for yourself, for the animals, and for the planet. And that's really more of a loving and a general way to live your life because I know that we've evolved over millions and millions of years and Mother Nature has nurtured us with love to be here. We didn't evolve over all these years out of hate and, and killing. So if we started on love and nurturing, it's going to end on love and nurturing. So we need to get there. And it's basically a transitional point to get there. So not only is it healthy for you, it's healthy for the planet, it's healthy for the environment, and most importantly, it's healthy for the animals. I mean, let's get the facts out. Yeah, I mean, okay, so one acre of land. If you were to actually harvest land properly and set it up, you can grow 30,000 pounds of carrots, 40,000 pounds of potatoes, and 50,000 pounds of tomatoes. As to where, if you use that acre, acre of land to do cattle beef, you're only going to have about 250 pounds of beef. I mean, and this really makes me sad today because there's so many countries out there that are starving and they're malnourished. And the fact is, is that you need to, have, to, first of all, to have all this cattle on the land, you need to first have other land to grow food, to feed the cows. So you're really using all this land that doesn't need to be needed. And I mean, 250 pounds of meat for 30,000 pounds of carrots. 40,000 pounds of potatoes, I mean, it's not even a comparison. Yeah, and also, 98% uh, of, uh, of the animals that are killed on the planet Earth are from the meat industry. So right there, you just start showing compassion by stop eating meat, and 98% of the animals that are killed on Earth will stop being slaughtered every day. So everyone's saying that they love animals, stop eating them, 98% of them will stop dying today. And we're not saying that you guys don't love animals when you eat meat. I mean, if you guys have a cat, a dog, a gerbil, a donkey, whatever kind of animal you guys have, I'm, and you treat it with love, I, mean, I know you love that animal, but I just want to present the idea today that cows, pigs, I mean, these animals appreciate love. They know, I mean, if you've seen a cow, if you ever pet a cow on the head, it loves being scratched. It, it, it has a lot of the feelings that your dog and the cats have. So when you eat them and they're tortured, they feel it just as much as your dog would or any other animal on this planet. And, I mean, 
The fact is, is that every animal, they fight to breathe just as bad as we do. If you throw an animal that can't swim into the water, and you throw a human that can't swim into the water, you watch them both flail around, they look pretty much the exact same fighting for their life. And the fact is that every animal is fighting for their lives, but they're being murdered, tortured, yeah. and slaughtered. No, the truth every day. Uh, in 2009, 59 billion animals were killed on Earth, and most of them being uh, sea animals. Um, 51 million, 51 billion of them, with a B, were killed, and then 8.3 of them, 8.3 billion of them were land animals. And the fact is, is that there is no such thing as humane slaughter. I mean, we, it is, we all know that slaughterhouses exist, but the fact is, is that how can you kill someone or kill something in a in a, in a, a, a humane, and compassionate way? There's no loving way to kill something. So I mean, when when I used to eat meat, I used to just turn a blind eye and think the animals were there for us, and it doesn't matter, you know, they're, they do it in a nice, humane way. I mean, I could show you guys a bunch of videos right now that would like really show what goes on in the slaughterhouses and what goes on in the dairy farms, but I don't want to do that today. I don't want to sit here and scare you guys into anything. Yeah, no, it's really scary. It's the longest running holocaust this world has ever seen. Holocaust, the mass extinction, the mass, ex the mass slaughter of, uh, uh, of a species. And, that what we're, and that's what we're doing every day with harvesting these animals just for the meat and protein that we don't actually need. Not only that, if you want to see, if you want to see a, bi a big man cry, let's watch some torture videos. That stuff makes me sad, it makes me angry, and no, we're not going to do it today. But I do want to address, address it a little bit because the fact is, is that it is happening, and it's happening today, so it needs to be addressed and talked about. And not only that, I want to go in not only about the meat industry, let's, let, let, let's for one second talk about the, uh, about the dairy industry. I mean, they're not necessarily raising their, their cattle to kill them right away, but I mean, they are pumping so much milk out of these cows, it is just ridiculous. I mean, they, I mean in, in, in order for a cow to produce milk, they need to like, like physically like rape them basically with a, with a metal prod, get them pregnant, and once the cow has the baby, they snatch the baby away, and then they, then they put the tubes on them, and that's how they get milk. And they always, they need to do this over and over and over again. Now, I have cows in my backyard at home, and nothing, the worst sounding cry I've ever heard in my life is when they take the newborn calf away, away from a cow. Weeks and weeks and weeks, the mother will cry over and over again. Just as I said, the animals have feelings like we do. Just imagine if someone took your kid, snatched it away, and then stuck hoses on you and started taking the milk away. And not only that, the cows are producing almost three times as much milk as they were 30 years ago. I mean, chickens used to be this big, now they're this big. I mean, so not only is it bad, but they're pumping them though, with the just hormones, steroids, and we're eating this stuff. So this is part of the reason why we went vegan, and also these people have went vegan also. So there's not just us, there's also many other vegans out there. So when you see a vegan, you know, getting mad or really, you know, you know, we see on Facebook, you see a vegan go into a restaurant and just, you know, really just go out and do an extreme thing. It's because they're so passionate. They, it's because they just watched a, a video on seeing the uh, tortured animals. It really fired. It really fires you up as a human being. Ask your heart if that's right. The answer is no every time. Yeah, and everyone's saying you need to eat the man animals to be strong. Eat the animals to get your protein. Well, here's two examples, and not just us. Other people that are building solid muscle and staying lean, just eating plants and vegetables, living a vegan lifestyle. I mean, we haven't had meat in over five years. If we needed meat for protein, we would be dead right now, and so would all these people be. But they're in, but they are in great shape and they're feeling great. Not only that, this guy right here just broke the world record for shrugging the most amount of weight. This guy's a vegan. Look at those legs. Those are tree trunks right there. This guy's got more muscle, more protein than he absolutely needs. Vegan, no animal products, no meat. He's not getting any protein from any animals. And the guy, look at him. He's a monster. He's a stack of stuff. He's shrugging 550 kilos right there. So I like 1,200 pounds he's just lifting. That guy's a monster. Vegan power right there in action. But not only that. Let's, uh, let's uh, go for strength. Why don't we talk about longevity a little bit? I mean, who doesn't want to be in the best shape of their lives for as long as they can, right? Well, well my man Jim Morris here, he's 75 years old. Look at this guy right here. I mean, let's look at the proof. Let's look at the facts. I've looked at a lot of diet, a lot of diets, and a lot of lifestyles. I've never seen a guy that's 75 on a different kind of lifestyle. All right, and this picture is kind of stretched out right now, but this lady looks a lot better. Annette Larkins, this lady's 70 years old right now, and she looks like a 30-year-old. And how? She doesn't use any skin cream, no extra products. All she's doing is living a vegan lifestyle. Yeah, you want to save some money? I mean, for, for your skin, it's not about putting product on your skin to make it better. You want to heal, heal yourself and your skin from the inside and out. Once you, 
once you are healthy inside, it will show it on the outside, and that's a fact. Yeah, and you can see it. Uh, we're gonna pull up our pictures again. Where, 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 where we were actually eating uh, meat and we got up to 250 pounds, and you can see right away we've gotten like five years younger just from eating vegan foods, just like these people. Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, Jim Morris. This guy's 75 years old. I mean, we've all seen 75-year-olds like hobbling down the street, gray hair, like they're backwards. This guy looks like better than the most 30-year-old. And he's only been a vegan for 15 years. He only started going vegan when he was 60 years old. Just imagine what kind of shape he would have been if he, if he, had, if he had been, been, been vegan a lot earlier. And, and this was and Jim Morris, and there was also a taxi driver who was a bodybuilder at 55. And this guy was just a tank at 55 years old. And I'm like, what is happening? I mean, I, don't even, I, I didn't even believe this picture when I first saw it. And I'm sitting there eating meat, getting overweight, and I'm like, I want to be like Jim Morris when I'm older. I don't want to be old and everything. I, I want to live my life to the fullest. So this man was a big contributor to going vegan and pushing through uh, the detox process. But we'll talk more about that in a second here. You good? I got go. strong. Strong like Jim Morris. All right, so let's talk about exactly why, why why we eat meat. In the general, it basically amounts down to four categories. It's habit, tradition, convenience, and taste. I mean, we're all taught at an early age, eat your meat. You know, I know my, I know my mom and dad, eat your meat, you need your protein. You gotta be big and strong, eat your meat. So we've really been kind of programmed at an early age that, that we do need this. And not only that, it's tradition. I mean, we all just had Thanksgiving, right? What was on the table? A big old bird, right? I mean, and what's going on? Christmas, another big old bird. I mean, we just get traditions where we sit there, we eat the meat. I mean, what's happening on Sunday at the house? It's barbecue time. I mean, this is a traditional thing. Yeah, and the one thing why it's so easy is just convenience. I mean, you can walk down the street, well, well, since we live in the, in the middle of nowhere, we can't. But if you, if you live in a regular city, you can go to McDonald's, go for $1.95, and get a double cheeseburger. I mean, the value menu is ridiculous these days. Junior chicken's for like $1.40. You know why? Because it's so easy to grab. You can just go there. So you know. So why not go eat some chickens or some dead cows or whatever? You know, it's so easy. I used to bring ten bucks to McDonald's and come out with the stack. I mean, we've all been there. Bang, 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 bang. It tastes so good. No problem. Down the hatch. I'm full. Let's go. Next time. Next meal. Tastes fantastic. And that's the thing. This food tastes so good. Okay. So I've been a vegan for uh, for over a year now, and I've been vegetarian for over five years, and I still have not tasted food like a ballpark steak before, with the onions, the barbecue sauce. Nothing is gonna beat that. I mean, I still will walk down the road and smell some, and smell the barbecue going on. My mouth will water. Guilty. What can I do? I, I still feel like I, mean, I used to eat this food so much, and it still smells great to me. But I choose not to eat it. So, so, so taste is one of, is one of the main reasons why people stick to just eating meat. Just what it real boils boils down to is taste over health. Is taste more important than health? Would you guys agree that is taste more important than health, or is health more important than taste? Right. I think we can all kind of get, get with kind of health is more important than, than taste. So this is basically all it has going for it is taste. I think we take our health for granted until we don't have it. Well, that's what it is. When we, guys, when we're 18, we are invincible. I mean, we can eat whatever we want. Just go eat McDonald's for the next five years. Don't worry. You're going to keep decent shape. But I mean, what, exactly what happened to me. I was, Time will catch up to you. It caught up to me. Right when I was 25, boom, I got... Big. When I was in college, boom, I was in, I, I was in great shape. It was perfect. And then, it, yeah, right about the age of 25, the burgers just started adding on, and this weight just kept going. It got to 250 pounds. It was not stopping. Why do we need to wait? Why do we need to wait to get sick before we go to the doctor? You know, what I mean, why do we gotta wait until we need a triple bypass before I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna think about eating healthy. I mean, I mean, what's really extreme? I mean, a triple bypass. I heard. I looked up what that is. They have to cut an artery or like a vein out of your leg. Cut open your chest, and they take the clog vein out and insert that one from your leg inside your chest. I mean, is that extreme? That seems crazy to me. I would say eat and people. The doctor's like, well, why don't we try eating fruits and vegetables? And the guy's sitting there going, it's a little crazy. No, no, crazy is cutting open your chest, cutting out veins, getting triple bypasses. And not only that, that's not even going to help you. People have triple bypasses, quadruple bypasses. Why? Because they keep eating the same crap food after they have the surgery. It's like, oh, I'm good now. My veins are clear. I'll just keep eating what I was eating. Couple months later, they're all clogged up. Boom! Clogged done. Up. Cholesterol's all clogged me up. Oh, I need, a, I need another triple bypass. Spent another $100,000 for this operation. One of the first symptoms of a heart attack is death. I mean, you don't, I mean, people go around 50%. their whole life. They think they're great. They think they're great. Boom! Heart attack out of nowhere. They are done with no warning. I mean, there's no coming back from that. I mean, and the fact is that the the, the fact is that cholesterol is only carried in animal products. So if you live a vegan lifestyle, you never have to worry about cholesterol ever again. You'll never have a heart attack. You'll never have clogged veins because 
because the fats in the cholesterol are only carried in the meats. Now, I've heard, now, now there, there's an argument against this saying, well, we need cholesterol. There's good kinds of cholesterol, and you're exactly right, there is. But the fact is that our body creates all the cholesterol we need. There is no way do we need to outsource for more, for, for more cholesterol, not only that, cholesterol that is foreign to our bodies. All right, so we all know the myths. All right, so we're all taught out there, you know, we need meat for protein and uh, milk is good for your bones. We all see the commercials every day with a guy pouring the milk into the bone, as you can see here, and drink your milk, you get your mustache, you know, or, or uh, after your workout, go grab your chocolate milk from the store, drink it for your protein and go play basketball or whatever. And campaigns like this are done every year, but it's, it's, it's exactly the total opposite. The, the same, drink the milk for calcium, when in fact, the animal protein is acidic to the body. Not only that, I just want to say to you, what do we see on the TVs? We see bacon commercials, burger commercials, meat commercials. What's the next commercial? Having health problems? Feeling great? Heart Take a pill? Heartburn? Not feeling great? Got That's some heartburn? It. Got these things? I mean, what's on the next commercial? Eat your cheeseburgers, grill your steaks, you know, pepto bismol Next one, not there. feeling well, overweight, do this, do that, you know what I mean? So it's they're trying to trap us right there, keeping us on the pills and eating animal products. When was the last time we saw a commercial where it was like, fruits and veggies, hot and fun, all the kids just eating fun, you having fruits and vegetables? We're not, we're not going to see that. And we're being programmed to eat these eat these meats. So, um, so right, it's right here, so, so, you, so, so they say you need an, uh, um, animal, uh, animals for protein, when this is just not the case. When protein is found, in just about every uh, fruit, fruit vegetable out there. Let's oh, pull that back up, Jay. I just want to mention as well that uh, per 100 calories, there's 100 calories of steak and 100 calories of broccoli. There is actually 11.1 grams of protein in that broccoli, and only like 6 or 8.4 in the steak. So per 100 grams, there is actually more protein in the broccoli than that piece of steak. And not only that. Your body can absorb the broccoli protein so much easier and a lot more efficiently than the steak. Because the animal protein is so acidic to your body. When you do eat animal products and meat, uh, when you do eat it, the, the protein is so acidic to your body, your body actually has to leach the calcium out of your body to deacidify the animal protein before it hits your kidneys and does real damage. And ha, huh, what's the biggest source of calcium in your body? Your bones. So, so, the, so your body has to leach the calcium from your bones to deacidify the milk and the animal products that you're drinking. Which we're drinking to try and get strong bones in the first so place. So they're telling us to drink milk for strong bones when actually it's doing the exact opposite. And studies have been, it has been proven where countries that consume the most dairy and animal products have the highest, have the highest amount of bone fractures. And as the opposite, the countries that consume the least amount of animal products have the least amount of fractures. The strongest bones around. So it, in, so we're walking around in North America, you know, calcium, you know, cheese has calcium, so everyone's having all this calcium, so why is everyone calcium deficient? Why is osteoporosis high? North America is the biggest consumer of meat and cheese, so technically they should be getting more calcium than any other nation on the planet. Well, why is that that they're still selling calcium pills? People are, are, are calcium deficient. Wait, you just told me my whole life that I'm getting all my calcium from the milk and I'm drinking it. Something's not adding up here. Yeah, so it's actually giving you osteoporosis drinking milk. So if you actually want strong bones, stop drinking milk. And, and uh, animals and animals, for that matter. <laughs> All right, so I just want to explain a little bit about food. And so I never really looked into food when I was growing up. I always just, you know, as tradition, ate whatever was in front of me, whatever was the most convenient, you know, at the time. And I never knew actually what food was actually made up of. And food is actually made up of three things: carb carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So, uh, so here, uh, this is a website, nutritionalfacts.com. You can go on there and type in any food that you want, and it will break down the properties of it and uh, and what you're actually eating. So this is an apple here, wonderful apple, right? 95% of it is carbs, 3% fats, 2% proteins. What? Wait, yeah, did you just say protein in an apple, Jay? Protein in an apple. What? No one ever told me this when I was growing up. Everyone's like, eat your steak for protein. No, no, no. There's protein in your apple. You know, 2%, not very much of it, but you know, uh, basically well, why you're eating an, an apple is for energy. And that's why the 95% carbohydrates really give you energy, and that's why you always have energy after eating an apple. So most of it is carbohydrates, and, and that's what your body burns off for energy. So also, we have another, uh, another fruit here, one of our favorites. The banana, which is, one, which is wonderful. One, one banana can contain about, uh, I think it's about 90, 90 to 100 calories, giving you lots of energy. As you can see, just like the apple, it's 93% carbohydrates, 3% fats, and 4% proteins. 
So again, still, in your banana, there's 4% protein. When they're saying you need meat for protein, when there's actually 4% of it in the banana. So, but you're like, hey, J, H, that's not a lot of I protein. I want to build some muscle, J. I need protein. I need right? some protein. You know, we got to put packs of muscle on 4%. What's that going to do for me, right? I, 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 I said, I love the planet. I love them all. But, J, I love myself a little bit. I want to build some muscle. I want some muscle. I don't want to be weak. Yeah. Let's be selfish and, you know, looking for ourselves a little bit on this one. All right. So, you're like, give me that ballpark steak. Let's not mess around here. You know what I mean? So let's actually look what a steak is made up of. This is legit. You can go to uh, Nutritional Facts right now, right after the class, and go type in chicken, fish, you know, check out what actually, actually you're eating. So when you eat a steak, 1% carbs. Okay, wait. You just told me the apple was 93% and this is 1%. 70% of this, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a sirloin with a little bit of fat on it. 68% of the fat and 30% pro protein. All right, there we go, Jay. There we go. That's what I'm talking 31% about. 31% protein? There That's we what go. I'm talking about, Jay. That's a bodybuilding meal to me, right? Where you get all that protein. But look at all that. Attached right to your protein is all the fat. And that's why people are overweight these days, eating the animal products, eating the animal products because there's so much fat in what in, in what you're eating. I mean, uh, there's a I mean, there's, I've been reading a lot of things and people are making carbohydrates to be the energy or to be the enemy. Oh, I gotta have minimal carbohydrates. I gotta watch my carbo my carbohydrates intake. I mean, what makes sense? Carbohydrates make you fat, or does fat make you fat? You know what I'm saying? Carbohydrates make you fat, or does fat make you fat? I mean, it just would make sense that the fat would be a more of a contributor than the carbs. So you're like, hey, well, I twist. There's all my protein. I'm gonna keep eating steak because your apple only has two percent and your banana only has four percent. That's not enough. I'm gonna go eat my steak. But don't it. worry, I got a friend. I was don't holding him back. I was holding him back. You're holding back, guys. Holding back. The secret here, you know what I mean? Boom! Spinach. Y'all know Popeye, right? Those big ass forms walking around all stacked and stuff. Because he was eating spinach. Sixty-two percent of this thing is energy. So right there. We all know we saw the steak, it was 1% carbs. So when you eat your spinach, you're still going to have energy. And what is that right there? 26% of that spinach is protein. And it's different than the animal protein like we're talking about. The animal protein is acidic to your body, and it's so hard to digest. As to where if you get your protein from plant-based uh, plant -based foods, um, this is water-based food. So your body can break it up so much easier and use it for energy right away. And not only that, it actually has energy in it. It has the carbs you're looking for. It even has a little bit of fat, you know. It, kind of makes it tasty and, and you know a, a little bit of fat in our diet is not going to hurt. And I mean to go with the once again to the fat in the steak, I mean I mean there is a lot of protein but the fat with it has all these chemicals, all these stuff that's just cholesterol. I mean it's got so much stuff that is actually harmful to our body that like why would you want to like if you can get all your protein from the plants, why would you eat the animals that are eating the plants in the first place? Don't use the animals as a filter for your nutrients. You want to get your nutrients directly from the source. Yeah, so we can get it from a protein, and also uh, you can look up c celery. Or, I mean, all fruits and vegetables have protein in it. So as long as you're eating enough fruits and vegetables, you, you won't have to worry about protein. Celery, or, something like 17% pro protein. We eat celery and spinach every so single day. So if you don't want to eat just handfuls of spinach, you can eat, eat a bunch of celery, or you can look up carrots and stuff. I mean, or if you eat, if you honestly eat a bunch of bananas with 4% protein, you're gonna, you're probably gonna be pretty fine. Because it's different, it's not acidic animal protein and it's healthy for your body. Alright, so why don't we just look at, uh, at, at, at uh, some more facts for a second here now. Here is the human with a jaw. You can see there's got the flat teeth, you know, the, uh, the molars and the flat grinders on the back. Now this is a carnivore here with the pointed jaggy teeth. I mean, this jaw looks like it is ready to rip open some flesh. I mean, it's ready to go. We got the things here, them. Now we look at the monkey with the same with the same flat ones here, the canines here, and the same grinding ones on the back. I mean, just 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 this question: Which jaw or teeth do ours look like? The carnivore or the herbivore? There we go. That's right. The carnivore's teeth they open straight up and down. So if you look at your cat or any meat eater, your jaw will go straight up and down. But if you look at a cow, its jaw will go side to side. And this is where you we, and this is the same as us. So. We use our molars to, to chew up grain and other things so we can actually do our stomach. Our, yeah, our jaws are meant for grinding. Let's look at the facts. Every meat eater's jaw moves up and down. It's meant for crunching that meat. Here, the, it's meant for grinding grains. Our jaw is side to side, a clear indicator that we're meant to be grinding grains. And also with the intestinal tract, right? Hey? Absolutely. That um, Our intestinal tracts on ratio are the exact same length as all of the herbivores out there, and the intestinal tracts of a carnivore are much shorter and smaller. Come on in. Sorry, no, I just wanted to catch this. Oh, no problem, no problem, absolutely. Um, so, 
Yeah. Um, the carnivore's intestinal tract. Yeah. So the carnivore's intestinal tract is much is much uh, smaller and much uh, and much more uh, compact because the meat. The fact is that uh, when you eat raw meat, it decomposes and it rots very fast. So the intestinal tracts of a, of, a, of a carnivore are much smaller because they can push that meat out. Whereas 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 when a herbivore eats eats meat it, it, it is, and it's supposed to be having fruits and vegetables and it stays in the intestinal tract longer, this is where this is where we get cholesterol, colon cancer, because we have all these things that are staying in the body way longer than they should and creating disease. Yeah, so right there our bodies are not designed to even eat meat. It takes, because our, our intestinal tract is so much longer than the carnivores, it takes so much longer for the meat to go through, some of, it's, some of it gets left behind, and a lot of it in our colon, and that's why a lot of men suffer from colon cancer later on in life. So it's just looking at the facts of just the jaw, I mean, the, in the mouth, I mean, it's pretty apparent to me that uh, we should be uh, eating kind of similar what the monkey does, that's for sure. And we also have carbo-digestive enzymes. Absolutely, our saliva is meant to be breaking down the carbohydrates. Like as we said, where the, the uh, a steak had 1% carb, carb whereas, the, whereas, whereas the apple had 96 or whatever percent, our saliva breaks down that apple and fruits and vegetables in a way more, and it's, it's supposed to, and it does it way, 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 way more efficiently. Yeah, so our jaws are meant to chew grain and grass, as where the meat eaters are going to chomp down on flesh. Alright, so we're like, alright, alright, Agent J, you convinced us. You know what? I'm going to try the vegan thing. I'm going to go off the deep end, go crazy, and just stop eating meat and animal products. I want to make one of the best decisions I've ever made and go vegan. But let me just say that there's a lot of people that try this lifestyle, and they fail. They just... Basically, it's kind of like Disneyland. If you try and do it all at once, you're going to fall asleep. This is not going to happen. We would, we would want to introduce more of a step program, a kind of a steps over time, because we all know steps over time can just climb mountains, and that's been proven time and time again. And for us, we didn't just become vegan right away. When I was eating the meat and processed foods, you talk to me about being vegan, I would be like, get out of my face, you don't know what you're talking about, I don't even want to hear it. I remember going to Subway and throwing like meatballs, you know, having a Subway melt with bacon, ham, triple cheese on it, right? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm ready to go. And then some guy would order a vegan sandwich beside me, and I'd be like, who is this guy? He's all scrawny and stuff, and I'm like, what vegan? Get out of here, man. You, 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 you don't even know what's going on. So it's all about taking steps, we would say. So a, a, a small step in the, in the right direction for us, it was basically going from white bread to, to whole wheat to never eating white bread again, to saying we're only going to eat whole wheat. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Not only that, it's like, let's cut out soda. Let's cut out all the white sugar. You know, let's take another step in the right direction. And after doing that for a while, you just kind of get energy. You're like, you know what? I'm going to get crazy. I'm going to go nuts. I'm going to stop eating meat. Yeah, and right there, uh, we went vegetarian. And so right there, when you're vegetarian, you can still eat animal products like cheese, you know, cream cheese, you know, all that goes up. And that's what we did. I hugged cheese so hard when I was a vegetarian. I stayed vegetarian for about two years. But I, I, I was happy with that because I wasn't eating meat and I started uh, losing a ton of weight. I mean, you're never really going to hear a vegan recommend someone to, someone to just eat a bunch of cheese, eat a bunch of dairy, but that's exactly what we're saying. If you're going to stop eating the meat, that is a good step in the right direction. And whatever really is going to stop you from eating the meat, that's what you want to be doing. And after a while, after we were vegetarian for about two years, you kind of get used to things. It's no longer like, I'm not eating meat. That's just kind of what you do. You wake up, you just, you don't even think about it. I just don't eat meat. This is what I eat. And you just get... It just becomes an everyday thing. And then for us, we just started to realize that the dairy was slowing us down. All this cheese was just slowing us down. We realized that, you know, we can take this another step further. Yeah, so right there, um, I, was supposed to have, ha I was supposed to have a slide up earlier explaining what a raw vegan is. So, so along, with, along with being a vegan, there's actually a raw vegan. And this is where you don't eat any cooked foods at all. Where you're only eating living foods. So vegetables and fruits. That's, uh, that's the only thing we ate. And we did that for about one year. And this one, I was about, this one I was about 250 pounds. It was soggy, man. I couldn't move. I had low energy. I was kind of like depressed about my life even. I didn't really know what I was doing. Couldn't really, I felt like I couldn't control anything in my life. And I'm like, i got to change something. So I started looking into things, and I'm like, what? Okay, so I, I'm out of control. What can I control? And it started with the food right there. I, I, could, I could control what I started eating. So I looked up a, 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 a raw vegan lifestyle, and I, and I was like, perfect. I, my body needs a detox. And this is where it, st it just started for us. Both about you know 230 to 240 pounds there on the left. I just want to say something about the detox process. I mean, a lot of people think I want to get healthy. I want to go vegan. Let's do it. I'm just going to feel fantastic. I'm going to feel great. Well, I'll tell you right now, it's, you're not going to feel great right away. I mean, 
let's take anybody who is addicted to anything. It's a detox process. Take someone off a drug, take someone off alcohol, take someone off meat, take someone off sugar. What are you gonna do? You're gonna want that meat right away. You're gonna, you're gonna have these cravings, it's gonna hurt. But you have to push through it. And this is why no one is keeping with the vegan diet or why they try it and fail. I'll tell you right now, from going from this to that, was not a happy process. I had to deal with the food cravings. You have to get used to going to bed a little bit hungry because the fact is, is that the fat deposits on our bodies, they were all made from the sugar, meats, and processed foods. So when you don't feed them those kind of foods, they're gonna be crying out to you saying, give me this, give me that. And this is where the food cravings come in. But I'll tell you right now, from going from this to that, once you lose the fat on your body, it can no longer cry out to you and give you these these massive food cravings, and you just start end up feeling great. So this is where you feel, this is the hardest part, this is where you're gonna feel, you know, it's gonna be tough to compare, but I'll tell you, going from this to that, that's when it starts feeling great. That's when you start feeling the energy. You would not wanna build a new building on top of an old building. You'd wanna first erase all the old materials, get all that crap out of the way on a solid foundation, and then build the right building. So you need to Take away everything and build it back up. No, and that's exactly what happened. From being 250 to going down to 150 pounds, it's a 100 pound drop. And that's exactly what happened. And we use raw foods to do this. We lost 100 pounds in honestly about four to five months. It just like melted off me. Stopped eating everything. I just started eating, a, uh, we had a salad every day, fruits every morning, and then had a bowl of vegetables every night. And that's what we stuck to. And it was a tough time. When your body's detoxing from all the cholesterol, all the dairy products that you've been eating your whole life, it's a little tough and your body will be crying out, you know, give me that bacon back, give me the dairy back. But if you push through it, it can be a good process and uh, I not only felt better being this, uh, I was, I stopped working out at this point, I just knew my body was detoxing. Our families were saying, you guys look like cancer patients, you look like you crack, eat right? some meat, eat some of this, eat some of that, but the fact is, you feel better, whether you look it or not. You're, like I said before, you're healing from the inside out. So you're gonna feel it here first, and then eventually it comes out yeah. to the outside. So everybody eats fruits and vegetables. They're like, oh yeah man, eat healthy and you'll lose some weight. You know, eat some fruits and vegetables, you're gonna lose some weight. Now, everybody eats fruits and vegetables to lose weight, and that's what we did, as you can see here. But now we ate fruits and vegetables to gain weight. After the detox process, after we dropped down to 150, Right here, our body put on about 30 pounds in like three months. Okay, so you're telling me you gained weight off eating the same foods you eat to lose, to lose the weight. Mind blowing, right? Yeah, come on now, everyone's talking about eating to lose weight. No, no, we ate fruits and vegetables to gain weight. But it was only after the detox process that our body could actually start rebuilding and, and gaining weight off of it. And it was about three months, started gaining weight so fast. Like all the muscle that I had before that was buried under all the fat just came back really fast. And it was different muscle this time. Like, I had muscle endurance. I, I was running 10 miles at a time, like in two hours. Two mi 10 miles in two hours is pretty fast. And I was doing this every day. Just so much energy. And this is what was coming from, I want to say, from, having the, from having your muscle rebuilt on plants, fruits, and vegetables. Exactly. And we are, we are actually eating right now twice as much food as we used to eat when we gained all the weight. But since we are eating the right foods, we can't gain an unwanted pound to save our lives. We're eating basically four to 5,000 calories every single day. Since it's the right calories, I'm telling you, it's all you can eat. These guys right here, they do not know portion control. <laughs> These guys right here, they still don't know portion control. We still love stuffing our face, but since, it, but since it's the right food, it's a green light all day. When I was 250 pounds, everyone was like, go on a diet, Jay. You know, Jay, stop eating six cheeseburgers. I'm like, there's no way I'm starving. You want me to literally eat and starve and then be angry, but then we're eating food and go on a diet? I'm like, this is not gonna work for me. And that's why we found the vegan lifestyle where you can eat all you want, literally. Like, I mean, I eat like a seven pound meal of rice and vegetables every night. Stuff my face and, and we gained the 40 pounds back, but now my body, stop. I, I, I haven't gained a pound in about four months and I'm still eating all this food. Like, my body has found its natural weight and where it wants to be. And the fact is, is that diets don't work, all right? Di and not only that, diets are never permanent. Never, no one's gonna live their entire life on a diet. I mean, so, so you're gonna do this for a couple months. You know, we've all heard it, we, you know, we lose 10 pounds, we gain 15 back. It's the it's the yo-yo effect. The next thing you know, two years later, you're like, well, I've been dieting for three years. What's going on, right? And not only that, I would present the idea again that that in evolution, Mother Nature is a nurturing. It's all about abundance, about having as much as you can and as much as, as much as you want. And with this lifestyle, this is exactly what this promotes. And the fact is, I mean, there's people online I've been reading. There's 400 pound people that know more about dieting than I do. But it doesn't matter how much you know. It's about what you apply to your life. You can know everything, but if you don't go out and do it nothing will happen. Being a genius does, it, is not knowing the answer. The genius in life today is about applying what you know. If you can apply what you know in your head, then you're smarter than anyone who has all the right ideas because it's all words and all ideas, but the, but the real, the proof speaks for itself. Can you do it?
Yeah, so so the proof is right here. It's worked for us and the and uh, many um, and, and the many others that we showed up uh, before. All, all those jack people uh, eating the vegan foods. It's not just us. A lot of people are transforming their lives eating fruits and vegetables. All right. So nowadays, my brother and I, we um, just, since we went raw vegan for so long, where we only ate fruits and vegetables, it's only in the last couple. Uncooked. Yes, yeah, uncooked. Vegetables. So everything raw, like fruits. Just I mean, grab a carrot and start eating it. Right, Li literally. That's how we did. Or no, I'd shred, shred on my salad or you know, prepare it the way I wanted to. So it's only now we started venturing into the vegan lifestyle, where we started introducing some cooked uh, starches into our food, like rice and potatoes. So just for you know, kind of an average day for us, like this morning, what what, what, what did we have? For, for breakfast, we split 20 bananas. Have you guys ever just, just tried to throw a little, a little bit of water into a blender and then just throw a bunch of bananas? It is, we're, we're talking ripe bananas, the ones with the brown spots, the, the, sh the nice, sugary, delicious, tasty ones. It is a delicious banana smoothie. And when you, it is so, like, no one's gonna peel and eat 10 bananas. You just get bored, I mean. But when you blend it, you can drink it, and I'm telling you, after 10 bananas, like, you are just buzzing. I mean, forget your morning coffee. 10 bananas, you are just, you are like, it's basically a sugar buzz. Yeah. It feels fantastic. And also, uh, as soon as you blend it up in, into your in, into your blender, uh, as, it, as it's chopped up, it activates all the enzymes in it. So as you, so say you were to have, you know, bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich for breakfast, you're gonna have that bacon, egg, and cheese, and it's gonna sit there for like three hours, and you, you know, it feels a little, you know, heavy meal walking around. You drink 10 bananas and it's all chopped up in a smoothie and you drink it, it's so ready, available for your body to take for energy. And as we looked earlier, the banana is made up of 90% carbs. So right there, it's all energy and it's, and it's all sugar and that's why it tastes so good. But the thing is, it's proper sugar for your body. Yeah, everyone thinks, well, whoa, whoa, sugar, you can have a sugar overload, man. You're going to just be, you know, it's going to burn you out. We've been talking sugar is bad for us, but the thing is, there's the right kind of sugars. I mean, I mean that uh, that white sugar in a green bag, it's not helping anybody because all the fiber and all the nutrients that go along with it has been stripped. But inside the bananas, it has the fiber. It has the digestive enzymes to help you process that sugar properly. Whereas you eat the white sugar, what does it do? It spikes you up, drops you off, right? Whereas if you eat the bananas, it's going to keep you long and coasting on a nice, on a, on a nice even scale. So you're like, hey, light twins, right on, cool. I'm vegan, right? I'm vegan. I got this bag of Oreos. You know, there's no animal products. It's vegan. It's healthy. Don't you, worry. You guys told me vegan. You know, I can't go wrong. Let's just start smashing Oreos and drinking Coca-Cola and have a bag of Doritos chips, right? Sweet chili heat, there's no cheese in there. We, we, we can eat that no problem. This is not the case. There are unhealthy vegan foods also. Yeah, we're not, yeah, it, it's definitely not about labels. You know, we're talk, tired of being labeled, living by a label, going by this, going by that. No, no, why don't we just be healthy? Even in the vegan label lifestyle, there are still unhealthy foods. And our goal is to be healthy. So, so basically, a lot of the bad vegan foods out there are going to be high sodium and high sugar content. The fact is, you can put a fat-free sticker right on a bag of white sugar, and that's right, it is fat-free. But when you consume all that sugar, your body turns it into fat. So is there a lot of fat in it? I would argue yes. So you're like, hey, light twins, I don't want to eat just rice and potatoes and veggies. I don't want to be like, you too much, you know, that's crazy, that's crazy. I can't stick to it like that. And I'm, I'm like, like, guys, don't worry, don't worry. The vegan food's out there. There's people working out there for us right now. Taking care of it for trying us. Trying to whip up the best vegan dishes. And these are just some of them that I found, uh, and the, and the, and, oh, if you go to a vegan restaurant and actually order some of this food, oh, ridiculous. It's too bad there's not more vegan restaurants out there, but they, but they can prepare food like this. On the top left, that's a soy burger. And you put that with some vegan cheese on it, it tastes the exact same, but you're not getting all that fat, and you're, and you're getting real guilt-free. And eat 20 of them. Eat as many of them as you want. And you're, at the end of your meal, you'll be like, oh, I'm good. It's, it, 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 not, it's not really healthiest for you, but it's not But it's not the steak. It's not the regular stuff. Your body's just going to be like, oh, I recognize what this is. So you'll process a lot better. So when I was eating eight actual cheeseburgers with bacon on it, getting to 250, I wasn't going to stop. I was going to go to 300, 350 pounds. So, uh, so right, so right now there are alternative choices like soy burgers, and, and, and you don't even want burgers. There's tacos, uh, vegan pizza. There's a uh, tofu that tastes like chicken and stuff. So you can also have all these glamorous tasting foods while eating healthy at the same time. Yeah, the general conception is that vegan lifestyle is restrictive. You're not going to be able to have d delicious foods anymore, and that is just not the case. I mean, you've seen that pizza. That is dairy-free cheese dripping off of it. It's delicious. I promise. And our side note. Yeah, I know, exactly. We just wanted to touch on this a little bit. I mean, uh, if you go into our YouTube channel, we talk about a lot of this stuff in great d d depth, but i got to touch on MSG and GMOs for a second. All right, let's talk about MSG real quick. Okay, now, 
Now, we've all been there. We've all bought the, the can of, of whatever we want to eat, or we've been to McDonald's. I mean, the fact is that McDonald's is made out of just bad materials. They don't taste good, but how does it taste so good? Why is it we want to go there and just don't give them all our money right away? Just give me two of them big bags with the MRH on it, you know? And the thing is, there's MSG, okay? This is mono sodium sodium glutamate. And this is basically the crack, the drug they're putting into our foods to make it taste good. I've heard that you can actually sprinkle MSG onto dirt, and dirt will taste good. I mean, this stuff, it is the taste of deliciousness, and it is killing people because what it is, is it is an excitotoxin. And when you eat all this MSG, I mean, it fires off fireworks in your brain. You're feeling great. You're like, oh, give me another bite. Oh, it feels so good. But what happens after we're done it's eating, eating the the, 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 the the, Mc, the McDonald's, it drops us off. Why do I feel like crap now? Why is it now right after I'm done eating, I'm hungry again? It's because you didn't have any nutrients. Your body's still hungry, and you're no longer getting the MSG fire off. So right there, so a 400-pound person can walk into, uh, into McDonald's, order 10 cheeseburgers, eat it, and then 15 minutes later, they're hungry. But wait, they just had thousands of calories. But the fact is, all that food had no nutritional value in it. So your body's still crying out. So you're eating this much food, getting this little nutrition. And that's why everyone that's big just wants to keep eating because they don't have any nutrition. But if you eat the food with this much nutrition, um, you, your body can start uh, start uh, losing the weight and processing everything properly. And this is exactly what I mean. This is, this is a very addictive, this is an addictive substance. I've been reading a lot of studies now that have been telling me that sugar is more, it was more addictive than cocaine. I mean, we've all heard it. Oh, I have a sweet tooth. No, 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 you have an addiction. Your body is crying out to that because that's what you've been eating. I mean, this is a picture of MSG right here. This is crystal meth. This is cocaine, and this is sugar. I mean, if I mix those all up, we couldn't really tell which which one is which. And just because one one is legal and one's not, one kills us in two years, one kills us in 20, that makes it okay to eat? I don't think so. There's also, and, and if that wasn't enough to worry about, the stuff that they're putting in processed foods, there's GMOs. So, so you're like, oh, don't worry, don't worry, little light twins. I'm having fruits and vegetables every day. I'm not eating any MSG or, or any of that stuff. But no, they're trying to poison us even with GMOs. Now, what is a GMO? GMO stands for a genetically modified organism. Now what they're doing is they're taking the DNA, let's say, of the tomato or the, of the various fruit or vegetable that, that, that they want to tamper with. They're taking the DNA, they are taking out a piece of it, and then inserting like a piece of mold DNA, a piece of insect DNA, whatever piece of DNA they can find so that, so that the tomato will look better, taste better, and the shelf life is much longer. Now I grew my, my first garden this year and, and, and uh, I picked a tomato and I bought a tomato from the grocery store. The tomato I picked from my garden rotted in three days. That one from the grocery store lasted almost a month. Three you months. You could this thing was it. sitting there, ripe and, ripe and red. The, the, one from my tomato, the one from my garden I picked three or four days ago was going moldy. Saying that this thing would just sit there and always stay good. And, and, and that's the only thing that the, the, uh, that the producers of this food is concerned about. Not our health, just keeping the shelf life of this food. Uh, uh, of this food longer, and that's why we gotta try and stick to organic foods. So when you see, like, like organic may cost a little bit more at the grocery store, but every time I see organic, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try and eat it to try and stay away from GMOs. Because the truth is, GMOs will age you faster, it will slow you down, cause cancers. Yeah, the fact is, is that we've been eating a regular tomato for over the last millions and years, and only as of the last like 100 or 50 years we've been eating GMOs. Our body does not know how to digest a GMO tomato properly. It's been download, it's, it, it's, it's been digesting the regular tomato all right, all right, all right. for years and years. We gotta speed this up a little bit. So some of the most- no, I just wanna say that organic makes a lot of sense, not a lot of dollars, right? So when you're, so when you're at the grocery store, all they're looking for is the bottom line, the bottom dollar. So it makes sense to eat organic, but not a lot of dollars. So some of the most GMO uh, foods out there are corn, tomatoes, soy, rice, potatoes, a lot of stuff is GMO, so you gotta go on the internet and really find stores that are selling non-GMO food. And this is where you see a lot of people saying, I gotta eat organics, I gotta find organic. This is what they're talking about. This is why they wanna eat organic. This is why people are willing to pay a little bit extra for, for, uh, for uh, organic food. <clears throat> so, so whether you wanna go vegan for yourself, for the animals, for the planet, for the environment, doesn't matter which reason you you choose to go vegan for. When you go vegan, you get all the benefits. You are going vegan will put you in the active participant in life for a better future. I mean, I mean, everybody wants to wear you know a cool T-shirt, you know, peace, love. I'm this for change. I'm this for change. Well, you want to be an activist. 
Well, the main word in activist is active. You want to be active. And being a vegan, you are actively participating in this every single day. So if you want to live life to the fullest, honestly, I'm living proof. Like five years ago when I was overweight, I was not happy about my life. I went vegan, changed my whole life. Now I have a, a new love for life. I have more compassion in my heart since I stopped eating all these animals. And just since stopped eating meat and all these animal proteins, my mind has just changed. I've become more clear. I have direction in life. I'm not... I'm not sitting in the iffy zone all the time. I know what I want to do, and I, and I think it's because I'm finally thinking clearly, and I don't have all these animal products clogging my brain up. Not only that, we really want a better future. We want a better future for you. We want a better future for every living being on this planet, because the fact is that we are all in this together. The fact is that what happens over, over in, in another part of the world, it does affect us. We are all in this together. I mean, like, like uh, the birds, or the bees, and the butterflies, okay? Uh, without the butterflies, there'd be no bees. Without the bees, there'd be no butterflies. So the fact is, is that they're not separate. They are one organism working together because we, because one cannot exist without the other. And what happens if the bees and the, and the butterflies go by? Then the whole food chain collapses because we're attached to the bees. They're gonna if we extinct them, we extinct ourselves. So we really need to be consciously aware of what affects us affects other things. And once we stop attacking the animals and everything, all the all the defenseless animals, maybe we'll stop attacking each other. And you know, and once you go vegan, the compassion and new love will come will come about. And, and so once we stop killing the animals, maybe we'll stop killing ourselves. I mean, I don't want to just like straight out just hit me out on you right now, but I mean, when I walk through a forest or I see an, or I see a, a squirrel or an animal, or any kind of animal, I feel more of a connection to that animal. I mean. I mean, I love animals so bad, I mean, I don't want to kill the animals. I mean, let's try and think of one other thing that we, that we love that we kill and eat. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna, I mean, I love my grandma, but I'm not about to go freaking kill her and hang her on my wall. It's not going to happen like that. I want to, you know what I mean? I want, I, want to, I want to be there and love her and show that. So if you're looking for the fountain of youth, it's proven that the, the eating meat and animal products accelerates your age. If you want to slow down and just sit there and relax and be, be in good shape for... For, for at least, I'm going to say four times as long as eating meat, go vegan and you can just stop aging right there. Stop buying the cream, stop wasting your money on products, this, help you slow down, this, no, no, no. All you got to do is heal your body and your body will take care of yourself. All we need to do is nourish the healing mechanism inside of ourselves and then once, and then once that gets activated, it will start showing in your life. We are 27 years old right now and I feel like if I could take my 18 year old your old self, I would just run him around the block. That guy couldn't keep up to me even if he tried. Fact is, we're in the best shape of our lives and it's only getting better, better, and better. I mean, I have my, even friends that I know right now, some of my friends, they look like old men already. They're hobbling around, they're already like feeling bad. I'm like, man, you're 27 years old, you're not 40. Not only that, we are suggesting that you can stay in your prime, in your 50s, maybe even possibly in your 60s. I mean, we saw Jim Morris out there, he's 75 years old. The guy's a truck, he looks better than, better than me, and I'm 27, right? So we're not saying believe us, we're not trying to push our beliefs on you, we're just saying let's look at the facts because the fact is that information is power and this is why we want to get this information out so when you try and get healthy or try a vegan lifestyle, you will stick with it because you understand and you know what's going to happen and the benefits from yeah, it. Studies are happening ever. People are reversing stage 4 cancers, tumors and everything just from stage switching to a raw food lifestyle. There's food that causes cancer and there's food that takes away cancer. I'm going to I'm going to ask you guys, but I, but, I, but, but I know you guys already know the answer. What foods do you think cause cancer? And what foods do you think don't cause cancer? We live in a world of polarity. Up, down, left, right, positive, negative, hot, cold, boy, girl. There's this, for this, there's that. So if there's food that causes cancer and disease, there's food that takes away cancer and cures disease. And the fact is that animal products, processed foods cause it, uh, fruits and vegetables take it away. And not only that, will they take away your disease, but once you're healthy, you're going to be able to do things, I mean, Literally, our lives have transformed. In two years, I can't even recognize my old self. So if you're not going to go vegan today, that's fine, you know, but at least you have the information. So say you're 33 years old and you're starting to feel, you know, you know like, like life slowing down. Try the vegan lifestyle and you can take 10 years back and start living your life the way you Just want. Just know that you, it, you are not a product of your environment anymore because you know and you have the information to take the control in your hands. We want to say, I'm like this because of that. I'm like this, you know, basically taking all the power and saying, here guys, have it all, control my life. But no, right now we're taking it all back, putting the power in our pockets, putting the information in our pockets, and now we, now we finally, for the first time in our lives, have the power to transform whenever and whenever we want. So, make one of the best decisions today. Make it definitely is one. Of, it is, if not, it's probably the best, best decision, decision I've, ever made. I've ever made in my whole life was to go vegan. It's not only change. I've done things that. The, 
that I thought would change my life and didn't. I tried this, changed my life more than anything ever has. So I gotta contribute this is my best decision in life I've ever made. We feel so good. We feel like we need to get this message out and talk to you guys today. So we hope you guys learned some and maybe take another look at the vegan lifestyle. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. We have like five minutes. If you guys have any questions, I'm gonna do my best to answer them. And uh, if you don't, you know, just keep an open mind. And uh, if you want to be super healthy and, and uh, run faster than all your friends, start eating uh, fruits and vegetables. If you want to learn uh, more, uh, more uh, about this, we have a Facebook page. We have we have a YouTube channel. I left a bunch of my cards on your teacher's desk. You're more than happy to take that. And uh, if you want to send us a message on Facebook or thinking about it, just write us up. We promise to, to give to, to, to get back. To get back to you. Yeah, send me a message on Facebook. I love. I, I mean, I have, I, I have tons of people every day uh, sending them, sending me messages, asking questions, and, and I would love to hear, love to hear your, your guys' questions. And also, we have, we cover a lot of this information in great detail on our YouTube channel. So go out there and even give me a comment, and I'll get back to you. If you guys want, if you got, if you guys need more information, just tell me, and I'll make another video on it. Just, you know, just let's let's get the information out there. So, is there any questions? We did it. We covered it all. That was thorough. Right on, guys. Thanks. Oh right, yeah. Thanks everybody. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.